This is Rockstar 2800 with Smut Free TV, the hottest content in these internet streets. Make sure you tune in, like, comment, subscribe, get your mind right. And then your bottom right mic, your, your bottom oh, yeah. right, there you this go, my bro. my first time on this shit right here. There you go, what it do, man? We got Stupid Young on Clubhouse on Smut Free TV. Y'all know what time it is. We live and direct. How you doing today, brother? Man, I'm good, I'm good. How everybody doing, man? I hope you're having a good Friday. Yeah, it's a little snow night. Motherfuckers been here all day. You know how we do it. We get it cracking. But I appreciate you, man. I've been trying to chop it up with you for a minute. I'm glad you was able to come on here, man. This your first time on here? Yeah, it's my first time. I, I heard a clubhouse before. You know, uh, a couple people I seen whacking on dude. But, yeah, it's my first time. For sure. For sure. Well, I appreciate you coming on for the keyway, man. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. Come fuck with the low. So let's get into it, man. Uh, this is Smut Free TV, man. We got the hottest content in these internet streets. I usually just interview you, get to know you for people who don't know you and not familiar with you. We also live on YouTube as well. Um, let's get into it, man. Mr. Mando himself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Mr. Mando himself, straight out of Long Beach. Um, let's talk about it, man. You Asian. You from Long Beach. Uh, you know, the childhood. Uh, 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 was it always accepted being Asian in Long Beach? Um, you know, growing up in Long Beach, the Cambodians, we, we kind of like made a name for ourselves. um, coming from the war in Cambodia, you know, for, for us it was a little easier, but the generation above that came over here, cause I'm, I'm a first generation Cambodian, uh, American, meaning that I'm the first out of my family tree that was born here the uh, ones before like my pops and uncles and um, they came from the from the motherland so i believe it was harder for them but they let they laid it down you feel me they laid it down and then uh they made it uh easier for us but you know long beach is kind of different it, it has, you know it has its own little racist thing going on with the you know mexicans blacks shit like that no nah, for sure for sure so for me it's like when did you want to start banging and being affiliated with this shit? You know, growing up in Long Beach, you know, it's a crip city. Like, was that a, was that by choice or was your family involved? Yeah. How did you get yeah. To that? My shit, all my, damn near like 10 of my uncles and my, and my pops, my uncles that, that like was running the hood at the time, they were, they under my dad. So my dad, when they, when my dad came, basically when the Cambodians came, to Long Beach and other parts of the U.S. The majority came to Long Beach. That's why they named Long Beach Cambodia Town on the east side, to be specific. Um, there was already blacks and Mexican gangs. You know, they had the Rolling Twenties, the Insane Crips that was already there. And then the Mexican gangs, like the Longos. Longos hate everybody and they racist. They try to pick on us, the Cambodians, the Asians. So we formed a gang. We formed a, a for, we formed a gang to protect ourselves. We didn't make a gang after a street. Like, you know, our shit ain't named after a street or none that we, our game was made to protect our people and community. So when my pops and them growing up, seeing them banging and shit like that, you know, it just, I, I just felt like it was a family tradition thing, you know, just nah, to get sure. in. For sure. For sure. So how was it for you, uh, growing up in Long Beach in your teenage years, you know, when you started banging, like, I mean, is it serious? I mean... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like the typical hood boy that come from a hood, a uh, broken home story. You feel me? Like not your, not 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 your typical Asians though. Not the Asians that other people are used to seeing. It was it was different. It was rough. You know, going at it with the Mexican still, uh, becoming. You know, my 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 dad and them. Be, you know, or they made our hood becoming Crips because we we allies with the insanes in the twenties. We're go we're teaming up, going together, you know, against the Mexicans, and yeah, growing up was pretty rough, you know, in and out of juvie, my whole fucking uh teenage life, most of it, and uh, getting kicked out of schools and shit like that, you know, just typical, typical uh hood hood shit. Okay, was you rapping back then? Like, when did the music get involved? When did you intertwine the music? Shit, yeah, I've been I've, I've been rapping since a kid, bro. I ain't gonna lie, but. To express it and to bring it out was probably like juvenile hall, probably like juvenile hall when um when I when I really came out with it, 
But like people that been in my life already knew that, like, you know, I just always like rap. Like I always like fucking with it. Okay, so um did you end up graduating high school? How did that go for you? Nah, I didn't graduate high school. I was close though. I got kicked out of Poly High on the east side. Same school as Snoop, same school as uh, uh you know, all the East Siders. And um I did uh, I got kicked out in ninth grade, I went to juvenile hall for nine months. And then I got out. I went to continuation. Then I got called with a blower because the continuation was in a it was in a it was in the Longos, the Mexicans, and uh, I got called with a blower. And then I, I had a few credits left. I could have finished in uh, in the pen, but I was short time and only did a little bit of time. So I got out. So it was like everywhere I was close. I just I I was too short there. You feel me? So what happened after high school? What like? Does the rap, uh, like, do you get more serious? I mean, do you get more in the streets? Which way do you go? Yeah, I, 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 I went more into the streets. The rapping was still just always there on the side. The rapping was just always on the side, but nothing. I never took it serious until um until a little bit before I went to the pen. I dropped a video. It's still on YouTube. I did the Don't Like to Chief Keith remix. That shit did, like, 500,000 in my first video. And I was just like, damn. I could, I could, I could probably do some, but still, after even though, uh, realizing that I, I had potential because of the views, I was still in the streets tough. And then when I went to prison and came home, 2016, that's when, and then 17, I dropped Mando. So what is what what's when did you go to the pen and what did you go to the pen for? Mommy, yes. I went 2014. I went 2014 and got out 2016. For uh for residential burglary four five nine. Oh, for flocking, we like to call it flocking in the city. And uh, you said what? I said for flocking. Flocking, yep. You know, flocking was a big thing in that era. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, yep. I went uh, 2014, came home 16, hopped in the studio. I was writing while I was in there, and there was there was people recognizing me in there. Uh, in jail from that first video I told you I dropped before I went to the pen. And you said you so dropped like, that right before you went to the pen. the Chief Keith remix, you said? Yeah. For sure, for sure. And then um, I, I was like, damn, I, I, I could probably take it serious. So I started being in the studio more when I got out. And then that Mozzie connection built built up. And that, yeah, that, so, so and, and that's what I want to lean into. So, but prior, before going to Mozzie, before getting the song from Mozzie, what was the vision? Like, I mean, did you start the record label, affiliates of your record label? Official. Officials, officials, my bad, officials. Yeah, officials. no, I, 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 I didn't start none of that till like years later. I didn't really, I, when I got out, uh, I didn't have no plan really. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back. I'm gonna go back to the hood. I'm gonna see what's popping and and how I can hustle and support myself. I'm a grown man now. I got up the pen. Uh, just trying to get my life back on track, you know. But I still, like I said, music was always on the side. I always did it for fun. And then when that Mando dropped, I didn't expect it to blow up like how it did. How it blew up. Nah, yeah, yeah. Go. I, I know you keep getting to that, but I wanted. How me and Mozzie, like, what was the like relationship? Like, was it just I'm gonna pay you for a verse? Let's do a nah, song. Nah. We ain't really that's homies like that. We ain't cool. Like what? Nah, that shit. That shit was natural. Uh, I came home. I met. I met his manager. His manager uh, live in Long, uh, one of his managers, Nano. He live in Long Beach. So we was at a function. Shout out I Nano. See Nano. Yeah, shout out Nano. And then um. I see Nano and we was just chopping up. He like, man, I fuck with you. He's like, he like, I'll get you on a song with Mozzie. And then I was like, all right, bet. And Mozzie, you know, he was super up and coming that time. I'm like, all right, bet. And he's and then when I got uh, on the phone with Mozzie, he was like, oh, you from Asian boys, Asian boy crib? He like, cause we we all over. We up north too, where he where he from. He like, oh man, I function with y'all. He like, I'm already doing business with your homies up here. So it was already a it was already a natural connection. And then um, I went up there to do uh, to hop in the studio with him. He showed love, jump on my shit. He said, "Man, I'm I'm living in L.A. right now. I I could pull up to your hood, you know, L.A. Long Beach, like what thirty minutes." He pulled up. We shot the video, and it just it just went it just went. My life changed from there. Classic video, first of all. Classic, Classic. fucking video. Let's get to that. 
Um, okay, it drops. Mando drops, right? Right. First day, what's your what's your reaction to it? Shit. What, what, how do you how, what's your feedback from it? I'm like, so this what this what I was hoping for. I'm like, I got a video where me and the homies in the hood in the backyard getting 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 haircuts. The day before we shot the video, I'm like, Mozzie pulling up tomorrow. Let, let's all get, you know, let's get fresh. Let, let's welcome him. We brought the whole hood out on the block. But we in the back getting here because I got an old video where where I'm, I'm, I'm on Snapchat. And I'm like, man, we shooting the video. It's going to be my first million views. Let's get this million views. I, I was just hoping for a million views. That motherfucker 60 times, 60 over 60 times a million views. 60 something million views. <laughs> no, so, for sure, definitely, just definitely. Like, you know, nigga was just shocked. It, it came so fast. Do, do you do, do you do you feel like Mozzie helped you solidify yourself in this rap game? I felt like he helped me with the Mando hit, but I felt like it was it was it, it mainly me. You feel me? It just happened naturally. Because like, I can't say, I, no, not to cut you off, but I'm saying because yeah. like. That's only half, like, that's just the beginning. That wasn't all of it, right? Yeah, exactly. That was the beginning. And and I really laid the foundation down for, you know, for, for the whole thing. Was, so when you, you see know, this start getting serious, you see the numbers going through the roof. You saying, what, what's the plan now? Because you saying you don't have the record label at this time. At, at, at this time, do you go get, does somebody get in your ear? Hey, now it's time to get serious. This a business. Like, yeah, because yeah. I, I see you move different. A little bit after that and, and become a little bit more you know uh assertive i don't know how to say it like you know it just seemed like you was more like on your shit like okay are you independent by the way are you independent i'm in i'm independent but i sell my music i got a distribution deal with empire and uh empire snatched me up right after the mozzie video dropped like right away they they, they told me go back up north i went back up north to the bay they signed me and and like I said, my life changed. It went none but uphill, up nothing but up from there. For sure, for sure. So um, after Mando, which Mando is now gold, right? Gold, gold. You have a, you have an official gold record. Right. With a lot of people can't say that, man. You oh, know no, what I'm saying? Like, uh, platinum now. Oh, it's platinum now. Platinum, yeah, platinum now. Oh, congratulations, man. <laughs> congratulations, congratulations. Damn. Hey, congratulations, man. Stupid young yeah. platinum. Straight out of Long Beach, nigga. Y'all better stop playing with that, man. First you know Asian in the U.S. You, oh, yeah? First Asian in the U.S.? Yes, sir. <laughs> See, and that's another thing. That's a, that's another thing I want to touch on. Um, How do you feel about representing a race that has been overlooked in hip hop for years. Man, I feel like I feel like it, it feels good, bro. Sometimes like I, like it don't hit me yet, but some sometimes it hit me, sometimes it don't. I'm like, damn, bro. Like I really like help break the, the the door down because now there's like a hundred stupid youngs. Now there's there's you got MB now, you got a bunch of Asians who who coming up. And it's uh, and give us some years. It's, it's gonna be like the Latin community. How the Latin community is on fire right now. It's gonna be just like that. It's gonna be the Asian community on fire as well. We just you know we minorities and we 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 a little less behind and shit. But it's gonna happen. It's a, it's a gang of new Asian talent artists. A lot. And it feel it feel good, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, cause you like big homie in that shit now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You say you got a platinum record, you gonna be a go-to nigga for the Asian hip hop records. I feel like. Yeah, for sure, it's happening. It's happening as we speak. Yeah, uh, not to. I don't know if I could break the news, but you you actually about to go on tour, right? To Asia. Asia tour, yup. Yeah. I already did the U.S. I went on tour with Mozzie. I did my own tour. Now, now it's Asia. Asia, yup. On uh, Monday. Man, y'all heard it first right here. Stupid Young is going on his Asia tour starting Monday. What? When does it start? Tuesday? Uh, Monday? Monday, I fly out. I get comfortable. Uh, you know, explore the motherland. 
And then um, December 12th and 10th is a show. Hey, they got the um, age, they got so, the real Asian Crips out there too now. Stop playing. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Stop playing. For I remember sure. my boy uh, Thirsty PM went out there and ran into some Crips, man. I was like, damn, man, this shit crazy. It's Crips hey, that, everywhere. That, that name sound familiar. Dead homies, dead homies. Yeah, for sure. He got the he got the he got the clothing line, dead homies. Okay, okay. Thirsty, oh yeah, yeah I, I heard of that. Yeah, yeah, Deshaun Jackson cousin. Shout out my nigga. Um, all right, man. So Mando, I mean you didn't put out I mean you had multiple features. You've been featured on many albums. Um I mean your resume is kind of incredible, man. I mean, do do you write for people? Have you written for people that we don't know? Have you written on songs? <laughs> Nah, Are you in that um, lane? shit. Uh, I'm trying to get into songwriting, right? At the at the end of at the end of my career, when I'm done as an artist, and I'm too old now, and all the youngsters took over, I just I I want to be a manager or I want to be a songwriter. I'm trying to get into songwriting because I feel like I could write some shit that don't even got nothing to do with me, like some R and B, some fucking, you know, just some shit. And and I'll, and eventually I want to move to that position. I never wrote for nobody though, but uh, I'm trying to. I helped Blueface write that record though. Um, the verse that he did on my shit. I never told nobody this, but I helped him write that shit. <laughs> oh, for, for real? Yeah, Cole was having a okay. hard time. Okay, for sure. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, so being from Long Beach, what's your relationship with Snoop Dogg? Oh man, it's good. He got love for the Cambodians. He put me on uh, two albums ago. I, I was on one of his records. He shouted me out on a Breakfast Club. He uh, he showed look, that's 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 a, that's a legend right there, man. He put the without him wouldn't be no Long Beach. They, Long Beach, I believe, will be overlooked. Nah, for sure, definitely. Uh, he definitely and, uh, that, that's his homework. Definitely a legend in the game. Period. Um. Uh, let, let, let's get into this, and then we're going to get into some questions. Um, I was about to ask you right now. Damn, man. I was just about to hit you with this one. Oh, um, oh yeah. What's your plan with officials? Now, what's your plan? Do you have other artists on the yeah. label? Yeah, I got an artist right now, a young artist named A.B. Blue. He did a million on his own. He on my channel. Uh, he got like that young style, you know, that young LA style where everybody sounded like they they rapping that certain way. You know, I, w I wouldn't call it the Draco way, but you know, how that just that young style and shit. Um, that that metaphorically speaking, uh, off beat type shit. He 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 rapped like that. I got him under the label. Um, and, and my plan in the future, I just my plan, I just want to be the J Asian Jay Z. I I don't want to be. I ain't, I gotta have. 500 million like him half a billion or whatever but of course uh, of course a nigga want to be rich but I'm, I'm talking about everything he touched like that's that's in the rap game that's big homie you feel me i just want to put all the eight, 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 i want to have a label with any artists that's dope no definitely definitely so that, that's why I'm, that's where i planted the seed and that's where i made the label official and what does officials actually mean Man, just being, you know, being official, being authentic, because the world we live in now and the game we in is too much, too much, too much of that, you know, too much of that fake shit going on, bro. No, for sure. You ain't never so fucking lie. Be part of this. You got to be official. <laughs> oh, God. Um, another thing, you ever, you heard of a guy named Bounce Back Meek? Yeah. That, that's okay. Right. Oh, okay, because he's claiming that you stole a song named Uh. Yeah, I, I I did like you know how Fifty Cent be trolling. Yeah, Fifty Cent, one of my 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 idols, man. Not just in the rap, not not just with the rap shit, but just like as a person, as business. He he's like brutal, you know. He he, he you know he pick on he pick on his 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 opponents, and bounce back me is just like another job rule, you know. I I don't want to get too much in details, but basically, basically he took he took my beat, he took my beat that I bought. It was still on YouTube. The stupid producer, I bought the exclusive. He didn't take it off. So he did a song on it. And I'm like, oh, okay, he want to play a game. He knew what he was doing. He just act dumb. So what I did is I took his hook and flipped it and made it to a, to a diss track. 
and then I and I, I'm I'm getting paid off my streams and his streams because I own the beat. So technically, I could have a song taken down, but I ain't gonna do no host shit. I'm just gonna let him keep 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 paying me. So that was like a chess move. You feel me? Nah, I hear you. I hear you on that one. And I, we we gotta talk about this. It's the man's birthday. I know you got a relationship with this man, Draco the Ruler. Long live the ruler, for sure. What's your relationship with Draco for the people that may not know and understand how deep that shit go back? Man, like I said, when uh when we was talking about my early life, I was in and out of juvenile hall. I, uh, when you go to juvenile hall, you either going to go to camp, which is like a boot, juvenile boot camp. You're going to come home on house rest. You're going to get released. Or you're going to go to this little foster foster care group home called Placement. And uh, placement is like a, a halfway house, but for juveniles. I went yeah, I know. I was in placement, nigga. Oh yeah, where you I was at? in Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood way up there on um, damn. Optimus. <clears throat> it's on Hollywood. Um, it was called the Hollywood Way In. The Way In. It was called the Way In. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, so you was in a sixth bed, or you was in a full facility? It was like a. It was kind of like a facility. Every two bed, oh, yeah, okay. two bed, two man, every room. Yeah, but you get to wear regular clothes and eat regular food and shit, right? Yeah, now. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, they were sending us and they check us in the shit like that, but we can't like we go to school and then we come straight there. Like ain't no yeah, yeah. nothing like doing nothing else. Yeah, I, I, I was I was in a program like that, but in El Monte, and I was uh, uh Draco. Man, uh, Draco was in there and we became close. We became hella close. He was my roommate and shit for nine months. Damn. He got well, out, he hold got, on. What age is this? What age year. is this? I was 16. He was younger. He was like 14, 13. He younger. And niggas not even, younger. niggas not thinking about rap or niggas rapping at this time still? I was, I, shit, you know, I was hanging out with the blacks and uh, I was the only Asian in that whole shit. We would all beat, we would all uh, play play our, our beats on the, um on radio. And, and just rap over like instrumentals. Lil Wayne was hot during that time. He was dropping no ceilings, so we was we was rapping off all them beats that he was on, just just all rapping. And the only person that didn't rap was Draco. He never told yeah, us he rapped. He never rapped nothing. That's why I'm like, uh, years later we lost contact, but we was real tight in there. I remember the the first when he first came to that placement. The first person that seen him was me. I seen him in the office. He was a new intake. I came, uh, I was going to the office for some shit, fill out some paperwork or something. I seen him, I banged him. I said, where you from, cuz? He said, I don't bang. I said, where you grew up? He said, he said something like Bud Long in the hundreds, some shit like that. And then he was always a shy guy. Like he was a, sh he was the baby out of our group. Oh, okay. And, 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 and Cub was just like, he didn't rap. <laughs> so, but we were so tight, we were, we were tight. So it surprised you I'm when I'm the nigga, when you start seeing this nigga named Draco all over the place, yeah. like, what the yeah. fuck I know this nigga, like. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? So how did y'all reunite? How, how was that? Like, how did y'all reach out and be like, hey, bro, this is me from Woo Woo? So when he had his first shit, I think it was Mr. Mosley or some shit like that. He, had, he just had mixtapes. He wasn't that known. Yeah. I, I, I hit him up like, bro, it's me, Alex. And then he said, I says, me, Alex. He said, oh, shit, what's up? I said, man, you rapping now? What the fuck? I said, you never told me back then. I said, we got a link. He said, yeah, for sure. This was before I went to the pen. When I dropped that first video, he like, for sure. So we both on our way up. And then me and him just, we, if I was out, he was in. If he was in, or if he was out, I was in. Back and forth. We would try to reconnect, but it would be one going to jail. So then, um, like, I'll go to the county or he'll be in the county. So then this time when he got out and be, and uh, for that murder charge and he got out, I, uh, we we finally linked. We finally made it happen years later. He sent me the address to the crib. You know, I slid over there. We were supposed to do some music, but nigga ended up getting faded. I, was, I started shooting dice. And then, we, it, you know, we just hanging out, catching up. And then uh, that's when we did the little boosie later on, on our second link up. Did the little boosie and, and yeah, I like that and, shit. And, and, and we, 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 we had more we had more plans, but uh, you know, shit, shit. God called my nigga, and that's what it is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So when last time you talked to him before he died? A week, probably.
probably a week before uh, that show because he just he just shot uh he gave me a verse because I was dropping my project during that time and he gave me a verse to a song and then uh, that song's out now it's called Get Ugly. He hopped on the second verse and we was talking about the video. I was trying to orchestrate the video. He and he started getting busy. You know, he did the record with Drake and and all that, and he he just had a lot of a lot of motion going on. So I'm trying to catch the nigga, and he like, yeah, let let's set it up, bro. And that shit that shit just happened, you know. Man, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate, man, for real. I know that hurt, man, because it's like it seemed like y'all niggas had a cool relationship. Y'all was in a placement together. Now y'all seen each other eat. Y'all both rapping, doing the same shit, cracking. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Sure. I don't live Draco, man. Today is birthday, man. Rest in peace. Happy birthday, homie. For real, for legend. Real, real legend. Real legend. So, yeah, man, I'm going to open up the floor, man, for a couple questions, man. Some questions. We got Stupid Young in here. We live, Smut Free TV. Y'all know what it is. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the link up top. We in Clubhouse as well, man. Make sure y'all ping up. Share the room. Y'all know what's going on. Hey, Goddess, you got a question for Stupid Young? Goddess, you there? We're going to keep it rocking and rolling. Sticks. Sticks. Hey, yeah, bro. You said um that your shit was it, was, it was formed for protecting the Asian community or Cambodian. What did you say? Yeah, yeah. Cambodian. It was, uh, they made that gang to protect, to, to protect our people from getting bullied and shit like that. When we first came to the U.S., because you got to understand my, 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 my folks, the generation above me didn't know English. We, they, 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 they just threw us out here. We had no help. All we had was government help. That's it. And it, yeah, well, they formed a gang to protect our people. And what generation are you? Uh, I'm, I'm first uh, Cambodian American. So my dad came here, I would say that like the early 80s. And I, I'm born in 92. He came here as a teenager. Okay, okay. So the knowing that that's how y'all formed the gang like did that make you push harder knowing that you was pushing for your community and not just for no bullshit yeah because i felt like the, the 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 gang that i joined wasn't really a gang it was like a family and it was to you know to protect protect our people and i feel like growing up as a young man that's that, that we, we start to learn that we want to protect our people and shit you feel me Exactly. That, that's what that's what a man's job is to provide, protect, and 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 growing up young, you you know you you want to get involved in shit, seeing what the other men in your family did. Exactly. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. No, for sure, Elena, Elena, Lane, Lane. We are gonna keep it rocking and rolling. Thrasher, thrash, thrash. What to do? We're gonna keep it right here. My bad, yeah, yeah. It's good, it's good. It's so I don't got no question, bro. I just wanna say keep doing your thing, bro. Salute I appreciate to you. it. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Deuce. Deuce. You got a question for my man's deuce? Y'all gotta let me know. We're gonna keep it rocking and rolling. And no, and no. I'm good. For sure. Buddy, we got a Long Beach native in here. Buddy, what it do? What's cracking, stupid? You remember me, cuz. I took the picture with you. Every time shit. I see you, I say the same shit every time I see you. I'm from Long Beach, cuz. Where, hey, where uh, at? I'm from the West Side. I'm from the Dells. Oh, remember yeah, I seen you? Remember the first time, first time we was together, we was, at, uh, we was with uh, uh, we was with Kendrick. No, no, we was, we went with Kendrick. We was with, uh, they were, what's the other nigga name? Uh, Boogie, West Side Boogie. Oh, okay, and then, uh, okay. I just seen you again at the, uh, somewhere, we just took a picture together the other day, at, uh, at some kind of shit. But yeah, I always see you, cuz. I, I was like, uh, I wanted to see what high school you went to and shit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Went to Poly High in the East Side, but only made it to ninth grade. But, oh, shout out, yeah, so shout out to Dells, man. What, what's up with TV, man? That nigga, man, you know how he is. Auto tune ass, you know. That's my nigga, man. For sure. That's my little nigga. Man. Man. Yeah, yeah, you already know, Aiden. But uh, 
I just wanted to say, man, uh, shit, yeah, you holding it down for the for the Asian boys, man. You know, we've been rocking with y'all for a long time, man. So, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Sure. So, appreciate that, bro. I see you on the next one. You know how we do it. For sure, bro. She's safe. Uh, yes. Yeah, she's safe. Southside Ronnie, what it do? Southside Ronnie, you did? All right, we're going to keep it rocking and running, man. Y'all know what it is, man. We live, Smut Free TV. Stupid Young just came to come chop it up with us. You know what I'm saying? Let us know everything. So what's, what's next for Stupid Young? I mean, I know you're going on tour, but any new music, EP before the year up or top of the year, what should we expect? Yeah, uh, I'm going to drop I'm gonna drop for the show a lot of music uh, this, this month, uh, probably towards the end of this month, just to, just to you know, keep shit going in 2024. But uh, 2024 should be a good year. I'm going to Thailand uh, to refresh and all that. And I got a gang of features in the vote that I still ain't, ain't, ain't dropped. So when I when I come back, is you know I'm I'm gonna start flooding, start flooding. I got I got to get back cracking. Took I took a little break because I have my daughter, you know. And sometimes we need that we need that break. And um, no, you need that break for the sure. Hey, Rockstar, my band. Um, I was going to ask, where in Asia are you going besides Thailand? And do, who do you have uh, plans to do any features with out there? Uh, I'm, I'm going to Cambodia, my, my, my homeland. Because Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, they're all, they're all next door. That's Southeast Asia. That's like more of the poor side. But um, Thailand is getting modernized now. I don't know if y'all know that Roland Lao was just over there. They open a cookie dispensary. They legalize weed, so Thailand gonna become the number one tourist capital of the world, and um, they they fixing that. So I'm a, I'm gonna stay in Thailand most of the time, but a flight from Thailand to Cambodia is only an hour, so I'm going back to my motherland, Cambodia, just to check it out. But it's still rough over there because of the war. You know the war, uh, people people sleep on the war because all they know about is Hitler and how Hitler ki killed all his people, but they had a a minister in Cambodia that killed millions of my people. So when they did that, the U.S. helped us, and that's how we came to uh, to, to the U.S. and Cali and Cali and Long Beach. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be visiting Cambodia for sure. I got I gotta check the motherland out. You gonna vlog any, it, nigga? Um, and please do any plans to do what's that man's name? Van Dan or Van Da or something oh, like Vanda. that. Oh, Van That lady. Yeah, and Sophia Cow or something, however you say her name. Do yeah. some features with them. I'm up here in uh, Northern California, Sacramento. Huge Cambodian population out here. I live in Vietnam, oh. little Vietnam out here. So oh, do yeah. some features you, you, really, oh, you really know, You know what's up. You know what's up. Yeah, I live out here. Yeah, you know, I live in Oak Park, but, you know, <laughs> we live in little Vietnam out here. But really eager to see some of the uh, Asian, you know, Asian artists pop out here because, you know, you guys got that smoke, too. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, she, Safe travel. She up, she up on game. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to do something with Vanda for sure. They waiting for that. That's the biggest Cambodian artist in Cambodia. Yep. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm the one in the U.S., so they wait, they waiting for that collab. But shit, hopefully we can make it happen. I appreciate you tuning in too. Nah, for sure, man. Listen, man. We got my nigga in the building, man. Stupid young. I appreciate you coming through, pulling up on us. Chopping it, man. Taking time. I know you get ready to go on tour. You know what I'm saying? But uh, anytime, you know, we always talk about the hottest topics in these internet streets on here. I know you probably hear a lot, see a lot. You know, I know you was probably weary of hopping over here. So I'm glad you trusted your boy. You know what I'm saying? Put this shit together. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Uh, other than that, man, I mean, shit, it's the top of the year. Expect some new music for you. Coming videos. Uh, are you acting? Uh, I, w I was in two movies, but um, shit. Uh, I'm probably just gonna focus on the music right now. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. I'm, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Unless that bag man. right, that's on. You know. Then yeah. Yeah. For so, sure, for so, sure, man. Well, shout out, stupid young man. I ain't gonna hold you, man. I appreciate you coming through, fucking with us, man. I ain't gonna okay. lie. Okay. You know He's what I'm saying. You already know I re rocking, so you already know. Appreciate you, brother. We here, man. Stupid Young Smut Free TV. Y'all stay tuned, man. Appreciate that, bro. Nigga, we gonna holler, cuz. Man, though. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah. Shout out to everybody coming through. We in this thing.